everyone, Susan here. Today I'm going to be answering another question for one of my patrons, and that's what's next. Okay, so Maria has sent me a wonderful email elaborating about her background and who she is and what her desires are, and I'm so grateful for that. I love that. So on my Patreon account, as well as my YouTube account, please do that. Um, give me, you know, some information about yourself so that I can just understand and expand more on what you may want and need. Well, she's asking a few questions and, you know, one of which is I did a previous video, Stretch Knit Fabric, um, on the bodice without darts and we did that and that was a, a great lesson. Um, she's asking about ready to wear and the sizing and the sizing chart and why they're so different. And then she's also asking does she have to have um, a special pattern for each stretch? I will answer all those questions in, in many ways. So first, the first thing that I do, the very first thing I do when I get into a company is I ask them where's their, their mannequin, where's their dress form, where are their blocks if they don't have a dress form or the dress form is not matching their blocks. And the blocks are these pattern pieces without seam allowance that we drape on the body so we have our specific bodies that we want to work and do pattern making up and around those blocks if that makes sense. Ready to wear is a little bit different than bridal and couture, but I couldn't find my main chart that I had when I had my company and my website, but I found one that was really, really good and really, really close. I'll do a close up of this one. And it says that the basic um, size six, which is, I know this is like an eight, we actually go down a size on the actual dress form, is approximately 35, which is what I have, 27, which is what I have, and then 37, this is 36, I would prefer 37. Of course, this is a size six, which then interprets into almost like a size two. So this, this one has, you know, 34, um, I padded it and it's, it still has 25, and then I padded this and it still has like 26. What I'm trying to get at is yes, on, on websites, you're gonna see a ton of different sizes, all kinds of measurements. They'll also differ from Europe, um, as well as the United States, as well as Asia, because the body is different in those uh, countries. The, the form of the body is different as well in those countries. I can give you those golden measurements. I can tell you that the uh, 35, 27, 37 is a perfect size six, but you have to go by your dress form. Whatever dress form that you have that you're gonna be using as your main base dress form. If you do not have one, you're going to have your blocks and those have to be exactly the measurements of what you consider your perfect size six or four if you wanna call it that. And when you get that, then you just do what's called a grade, a one inch grade. A one inch grade means we'll just go up one inch at the bust level, waist level, and hip level to make the next size. If that's a six, then the next one will be an eight, 10, 12, 14, etc. And down, you would then have to grade down from a six to a four to a two to a zero. To get past the, the extra, extra small or the zero, zero and, and the 16, 18, 22, etc., the sizing, they'll be different. But all the way from, I would say, a two to about a 12, 14, they stay the same. You're also asking about extra small, small, medium, and large. Extra small, small, medium, and large are different. They are a combination of two sizes. So zero, two is extra small. Four, six is small. A 10 is medium. 12, 14 is large. And then you would go, like I said, extra, extra large or extra large and extra small. Once you are in those measurements and you're doing extra small and you're just making garments that state extra small, small, medium, and large, you have to do what's called a one and a half inch grade, meaning that this bust level that's 35 then has to become a 36 and a half inch for 
the next size, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't or it does, please give me comments below so I can understand what you, what you need and what you desire. As far as draping, draping, we did the bodice with the knit. If you really want to do a lot of knits, you know, in your company, you're going to have to do, unless you're able to calculate, and I have not been able to, there's very few people who can do that, calculate the difference between one stretch and another flat, you will then have to drape your bodice or your dress or your basic pattern on your dress form with each one of the knits that you're planning to use in your company. So I would suggest that you pick no more than three different knits that you're gonna be showcasing in your company and then make a base, basic bodice, whether it's just a bodice and the skirt or a torso sloper on each one of those stretches. Then you can either do flat pattern, a design, a new design for those stretches, or you can drape them as well on the dress form. Once you have the one style that you have, whether it's flat pattern or draping, then you have to increase the size and decrease the size with what's called grading. And that would be a whole nother lesson in itself. I hope that answered your questions. Um, you give me feedback, give me comments. But meanwhile, I thank you so much for watching. Come, come up with your uh, question for next month and we will see you there. Thank you, bye-bye. <music>